Alright guys, I hope you've been really enjoying the Chrono Cross playthrough because this is going to be the end of it. Let's uh, fill out the last, like, spots that I have here. Just have stuff there. But we are going to go right to Opasa Beach and end this. I think it's actually, you have to do it in Homeworld, though. But you gotta go to Opasa Beach to switch over to Homeworld, so... You'll know right away, because you see Chrono, Luca, and Marl hanging out on the beach. That's where the place to go is. And you could have quite an extensive conversation with them. Here we are. Alright. Well, Luca's right here. Let's talk to her first. So you finally made it, Sergei. When did this sorry tale all begin? Was it ten years ago, when you almost drowned here? Or was it fourteen years ago, when you were wounded by that panther demon that attacked you, resulting in you being carried to Chronopolis, where you came into contact with fate and the frozen flame? Or perhaps it was even twenty-four hundred years in the future, when the time crash rolled Chronopolis back to prehistoric times? Or even it could have been twelve thousand BC, when an ancient magical kingdom met its end after trying to use Lavos? Each is close to being correct and yet at the same time so far from the right answer. The true beginning was during the destruction of the ancient kingdom of Zeal. As the palace collapsed around her, Princess Sara was sucked into a dimensional vortex along with the Lavos Mammon machine. Sara and Lavos became unified into one even more powerful entity that would devolve into the Devourer of Time. Filled with the hatred and sadness of Lavos, half of Sara's mind became set on destroying all of, its ex all of existence, yet at the same time the other half of her mind desired to save the universe and to be rescued herself. As Sara fell through the time gate in this condition, she heard your crying echoing through time. That is when her story and yours began to intertwine. It is also when the past and the future began to intersect, and when the world began became divided into two. Led by the pitiful crying of the young Sergei made as the panther demon's poison took hold of him, Princess Sara traveled ten thousand years in time to try and make contact with this dimension. This caused a raging magnetic storm that resulted in fate system malfunction, which led Sergei to the frozen flame. Yes, Sergei, the sound of your crying touched the heart of Princess Sara. Before the destructive mindset could become dominant, she cloned herself, and sent her copy into this, this dimension. Sara left her baby daughter clone with her ancient pendant, possessing magical powers. This was to safeguard her daughter clone in life and death situations. The pendant would rewind time a little, sending her daughter clone into a safer point in the immediate past. That's right, kid is Shala's... I said it wrong. <laughs> it's Sara! They fucked up the translation in both games! That's right, kid is Sara's daughter clone. You're wrong. I'm me. I ain't no Sarah's daughter or clown. Yes, that's right, kid. If that's how you feel. I think Princess Sarah would have wanted, you, wanted it to be that way, too. And now about Project Kid. The time control project Balthasar planned out. The whole project existed to lead you to this one special point in time. The founding of Chronopolis, the time crash, and the battle between fate and the dragon gods. It was all coordinated so that you would get your hands on the Chrono Cross and come to this place. Of course, Kid was not to know anything about this whole plan until later, when all this will finish. Further in the future, Kid is meant to travel ten years in time from now to save Sergei from drowning. And then Kid was also meant to call Sergei into the other world as he spoke with Lena here on Opasa Beach. You're our last hope, our final chance. Only you, who came into contact with Sarah. And Kid, Sara's clone daughter, can do it. In the darkness that exists on the other side of time, Sara has been integrated with the Devourer of Time. Please, Sergei, release Princess Sara from the binds of that monster and her own hatred. Show us, the life forms that exist on this planet, what our new future will be. Sorry for making you sad, Kid. 
You see, we no longer exist in this timeline. But it is a relief to see that you two, that you have grown into such a fine-looking lady. But of course you're beautiful. After all, you're the great Luca's little sister. Sis. Well, good luck, kid. Give it your best shot. Show us, the life forms that exist on this planet, what our new future will be. Okay, so that's, that's it. You, you gotta talk to them multiple times to get, like, the full story. We'll go over and talk to Marl. Yeah, 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 okay. A new species is about to be born on this planet. An alien life form even more evolved than the old Lavos. At the darkness beyond time, the weakened Sara came into the influence of Lavos, and the two became one entity. It is now up to you, the one whom the frozen flame has chosen as its arbiter. You alone can decide how the new Lavos, which has engaged Shala with it, Sara within it, will evolve from here. Your actions will determine whether the future of time is devoured by Lavos, sending the world into everlasting death. Balthasar foresaw this was going to happen in his world in the year 2300 and he was determined to prevent it from happening, no matter what it took. The Chrono Cross. It alone can combine the sounds of the planet that the six types of elements produce. The melody and harmony that brim within all life forms. Use the Song of Life to heal her enmity and suffering. We entreat you, Sergei. Please save Sara. Please, use the Song of Life to heal her enmity and suffering. You're the only one that can do it. Right, let's talk to Chrono. He drops a bomb on you here. Where even angels lose their way. Ten years ago you died at this very spot. He drops two bombs on you, I think of it. There's no mistake. You drowned. The truth is, this world in which you are still alive is the, irreg is the irregularity. This is the false reality. Ten years ago it was Lynx who tried to kill you at this beach. After Prometheus broke the link between fate and the flame, fate tried to eliminate any obstacle that stood in its way. In the meantime, the six dragons had sent Harl forth to try and gain possession of the flame. Harl made contact with Fate's biological incarnation, Lynx, and tricked him into temporarily joining forces. The elimination of the Prometheus, uh, of the Prometheus circuit... Uh, sorry. Let's try that again. The elimination of the Prometheus circuit's lock on the frozen flame was everyone's top priority. Lynx and Harl abducted Luca, who alone could release the Prometheus lock that guarded the flame. But the whole attempt only ended in failure. Then they just waited for you to appear instead. You see, fate calculated that you would one day cross the dimensions and try to make contact with the flame. I don't know how to break this to you, but Lynx was actually your father, Wazuki. Drawing closer to the flame caused him to become unstable, and the image of you dying in terror changed him completely. Finally, after having his psyche totally eroded, he lost his soul and was easily integrated by fate. Fate turned Wazuki into a biological interface, modeling him after your worst fear at the time, a panther. Although Wazuki managed to escape from Cornopolis with you, he later completely succumbed to fate. Humans are such fragile, disjointed, imperfect things, love and hate, life and death. Perhaps even fate itself dreamed of using the flame to someday reincarnate itself into a new species. It's quite sad, really. It's like when you gaze into the flame, the flame gazes back into you. It's now up to you to decide how you want to live. You are the new Chrono Trigger. Okay. There's nothing else that needs to be said. Let's use the time egg and get out of here and fight the final boss. Was I not, <laughs> was I not close enough? Okay. No beginning and no end to the darkness of time. The final gate, which leads to the darkness of time. Looks like this is finally it. Come on! It's time to bring this chapter to an end and create a brighter future. Come on, Sergei, me mate. You don't want to keep the girl waiting any longer. She's been waiting for you, and only you. And for over 10,000 years, I might add. If the world's going to be destroyed, then let it be destroyed. If history is going to change, then let, bloody, let it bloody well be changed. I'll show you what radical dreamers really dream about. do it.
final boss. All right. Let's see if I can do this. I'm waiting for it to attack. I know it's going to like lead off with something powerful, like usually Tornado. Omega Grain. That's even worse. Okay. No, I gotta start with Sergey. Okay, you defend. 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 <sighs> this didn't work out right. Come on, just attack me, Lavos. Come on. Here it goes, Omega Grain again. Alright, we're good. All right, yellow, uplift. Once you lock him in the combo, we should be able to attack back. I didn't have kid, I don't know if this is gonna work right. Shit. Red, magma bomb. Green. Bushwhacker. Blue. Aqua Beam. Wait, I just used blue, right? Yellow, red, green, blue. Black. Gravity blow. I don't know if I... Oh. Sergei's at minus two. Kid doesn't have a lot of... She'll have enough for one attack and an element. If that gives Sergei enough... To use the Chrono Cross, I can end it here. Let's see. Oh, it's not enough! Oh, I fucked it up bad. No, I, I did it completely wrong. Oh, no, okay, he's got three. He's got three points. I can do it. I don't even need to do anything. I got it. I got it. I did it. Yellow, red, green, blue, black, white. Chrono Cross. This will end the game. Put the controller down and just enjoy the really awesome ending. Oh man. Open your eyes. You know it's coming. And that's how you do an earthbound ending properly. Not by praying.
I've been waiting an eternity just for this very moment. Meaninglessly hurting one another, the disappearing life forms, the words that become deleted, the thoughts that become buried, the pool of cells that slowly evaporate, the echoes of consciousness that slowly fade. Love to hate, hate to love, why were we born? Why do we die? Evolution? The survival of the fittest? What is there to be achieved from harming one another, killing one another? The eggs that we call planets, and the innumerable spermatozoa which gather around these that we call life forms. When one of those countless seeds inseminates a planet, a new universe is born. But until that occurs, hundreds of millions of years will pass, and innumerable life forms will be born, then die. That is the be all and end all. Everything exists for that one moment, all so that the, all so that the universe can evolve into the next dimension. Does that make us all just pawns? Are each of our short lives nothing but a cheap sacrifice so that the cho one chosen life form can be born? No, that is not the case. Each and every one of us has a chance of becoming that one chosen life form which inseminates a planet. Yes, it could be you. Genes and environment, each of us tries to do his best under the limited conditions we are each dealt. Each life form that attempts to eke out a decent life for itself forms a link in the golden chain that leads to the creation of a new universe. If one link is missing, there will be no future. There is no such thing as a useless life form. No such thing as a pawn. Every single thing in the whole of nature is perhaps just dreaming a dream of life. All of them are also perhaps nothing more than a dream dreamt by the planet before it is born. Oh, but yes, eventually all dreams will return to Zervan, to the Sea of Dreams. Sergei, don't go yet, Sergei. It's all right. Everything is all right now. Time, which has been divided, will be unified again now. The time for farewells has come. You will lose all memory of this whole adventure and return to your own time. But this time, you will be able to live your own life. Yes, I will continue to follow in my brother's footsteps as a great dragoon. Good luck to you, Sergei. I look forward to the next time we meet. We alone do not have the power to heal the world's woes or to solve all its mysteries. And yet even then... It was bloody good knowing you, mate. Thanks for being born you, Sergei. I guess now's the time to say see you later, mate, but I'll find you. Sometime, somewhere, bloody sure of it. No matter the time period, no matter the world you live in, I'll find you. I'm sure, I am sure I will find you. So the little speech from Glenn seems a little weird, but usually, like, whoever the two that you brought with you will say something at the end. Sergey. Sergey. Hey, Sergey. But Kid doesn't say anything, because she's... Sara, so... Goes back to the beginning of the game. And he passed out. Oh. Are you alright? What's the matter? Don't scare me like that. You just passed out all of a sudden. Hmm? What? Terra Tower. Fate. What are you talking about? We just got here. We just got out here. You got some Komodo Dragon Scales for me, don't you remember? You sound confused. Come on, Sergey. Get with the program. Our summer's just started.
Thus the curtain closes on another tale. An eternity is past. Fleeting dreams fade into the distance. All that is left now is me and my memories. But I'm sure we'll meet again, someday, you and I. Another place, another time. It's just that we might not realize that you are you and I am me. Let us open the door to the great unknown, come across another reality, and live another today. Even when the story has been told, life goes on, until we meet again. Take care of yourself, my friend. Forever yours, Sara Kid Zeal. It's such a tease because she's sitting with her brother who's not in this game. Like, there's the hint that maybe Guile was supposed to actually be Janus, but they never expanded on Because the game is, it's, it's a brilliant, it's a masterpiece. It's one of my favorite RPGs, but it's unfinished as well, you know. But there you go, Chrono Cross. Director Masato Keita. Art director, Yusuyuki Hone. Main programmer, Kiyoshi Yoshi. Music, Yusunori Mitsuda. Player character design, Nobutoro Yuki. Field selection, scenario writer, Masato Kato. Event system programmer, map programmer, and movie program, Kiyoshi Yoshi. I can't keep up with it at this point. <laughs> Art conceptualization, Yatsuyuki Hone. There's so many people who are involved in this. Unfortunately, it was very... Very few, if any, of the people that were in, on the Dream Team that made Chrono Trigger, but, you know. Still, just like I said, it's a masterpiece. It's one of my favorite RPGs. I actually do like it a little better than Chrono Trigger, mostly due to the story. You know, and the unusual gameplay really does play a part. I really like the, the battle system, you know. But, you know, um, the Dream Team created Chrono Trigger. These guys that made Chrono Cross, they didn't get that name, though. But, I mean, it was, it was Squaresoft and Chunsoft coming together, you know? The creators of Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest working on a game together. Just seeing that Lean's Bell reminds me of the fight with Miguel and how hard that was. Another thing this, I mean, this, this game had going for it in a major way was... Um, the music, I mean, the music in Chrono Trigger was absolutely fantastic. It's a classic OST, but Chrono Cross, I actually like it a little better once again. Um, some people consider that to be like almost like gaming blasphemy to say that anything about Chrono Cross is better than Chrono Trigger, unless you're talking about the graphics, but I, I think that they did a little bit better with like everything. I think that this game is just vastly underrated, and I almost wish that they could like, like remake it or something, and like, give it, give it the, um, what it was meant to be, you know, like, almost, like, expand upon it even more. Like, even though this was already an expanded version of Radical Dreamers, you know, I would like to see an expanded version of Chrono Cross, where, like, all the characters had more of a fleshed-out backstory, where, you know, some of the parts of it that seemed a little kind of unfinished are finished. This is really the nice part of the song here. I'm gonna shut up a little here. Mm -hmm. 
It's also just hard to find a, a video game with as poignant an ending, you know? It's not epic, it's poignant. And, um, you know, you know, like I, t I mentioned Earthbound earlier, like a lot of people talk about the end of Earth, and yeah, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna, like, sit here and talk shit about Earthbound again, because I felt I've done that enough, but a lot of people talked about the ending of it, and, and Gigas, and, like, all the symbolism behind it, and praying, and... And I, I felt it was done badly. I felt that they had their hearts in the right place, but that they didn't know what they were doing in terms of making it, you know, really poignant and making it really work. I think that people saw it, you know, they played it when they were young and impressionable and it had an effect on them, but looking at it with a critical eye, it's 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 hard to praise what they try to do when I think it was a failure. And I think that Chrono Cross uh, did that sort of ending you know, the Gigas ending in a way that was cool in a lot of ways because it wasn't the only way to win, um, but it was the only way to get the greater ending, you know, and it just, it was just so much more beautiful. So, uh, yeah. I will find you. Even if I have to search the world over. Sometime, somewhere, I'm sure. And you see the redux of Kid at the Beach, except she's in her true form. She's Sara. And that's it. That's Chrono Cross. So, you know, um... I almost feel like it would be wrong to talk about, like, what comes next, but... I feel like I should just kind of like end it here and just like leave it at that because it's it's still a powerful ending, you know. It still gets me with the enormity of what they did and the risk that they took in making this. And I think it paid off for some people more than others and for me it definitely paid off because this always resonated really well with me. Um but that being said, um yeah, I mean the, the playthrough's over. I'll see you guys soon. Um we're going to be starting Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow for the DS next. So I hope you guys will enjoy that, and I hope you guys enjoyed this playthrough. And uh, you know what? Poignant ending or not, it's become a tradition to end every LP that I do by saying fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> See you guys.